Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing part 2 of Math for Nurses. And here we will be discussing certain formulas and measurements. And this is a continuation of part 1 of Math for Nurses. And if you have not watched the part 1 video, you can find the description link below. This video will definitely be useful for nurses to take competitive exams like NCLEX, CBT, HAD, Prometric exams, etc. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. First comes bladder irrigation, urine output calculation. How will you calculate the urine output if patient is on continuous bladder irrigation? The formula will be volume out minus volume in which gives the urine output let's do it with an example the physician's order states continuous bladder irrigation at 60 ml per hour with normal saline to keep urine free from clots the nurse maintains the cbi at 60 ml per hour for the 8 hour shift that is 7 am to 3 pm the nurse empties 950 ml from the patient's euro bag calculate the urine output now, as already mentioned, the formula is volume out minus volume in, which gives the urine output. The volume from the euro bag was 950 ml. The amount given for continuous bladder irrigation was 60 ml per hour and the nurse's shift was for 8 hours. So, 60 multiplied by 8 is 480 ml. So, the amount given for irrigation was 480 ml in total. So, 950 minus 480 gives 470 ml and hence the urine output will be 470 ml next comes fluid balance urine output calculation fluid balance is a term used to describe the balance of the input and output of fluids in the body to allow metabolic processes to function correctly what is neutral balance urine output what is positive balance urine output and what is negative balance urine output let's discuss now what is neutral balance urine output here the input is equal to output for example if the intake is 1200 ml the output is also 1200 ml what is positive balance urine output here the input is greater than the output for example the intake is 1200 ml the output is 900 ml and so 300 ml is the positive balance. What is negative balance urine output? If the input is less than output, it's called negative balance urine output. For example, intake is 1200 ml and output is 1400 ml. And so it is 200 ml negative balance. Next comes calculation of temperature conversion of Fahrenheit to Celsius. How to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius? The formula is Celsius equal to Fahrenheit minus 32 multiplied by 5 by 9. For example, the temperature is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. So Celsius is equal to 98.6 minus 32 multiplied by 5 by 9. And we get the answer 37. So the temperature will be 37 degree Celsius. Next comes conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit. Here the formula is Fahrenheit is equal to Celsius multiplied by 9 by 5 plus 32. For example, temperature is 37 degree Celsius. Fahrenheit is equal to 37 multiplied by 9 by 5 plus 32. And the answer is 98.6, hence temperature will be 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Next comes conversion of pounds to kilograms, that is LBs to kilogram. Now, to convert patient's weight in pounds to kilograms, the formula is kilogram equal to LB divided by 2.2. And here you have to remember 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 LB. Let's look at this with an example. Patient's body weight is 160 LBs and convert this to kilograms. So the formula is kilogram equal to LB divided by 2.2. So 
160 divided by 2.2 gives the answer 72.7 kilogram that is the patient's weight will be 72.8 kgs. Next comes conversion from kilogram to pounds. To convert kilogram to pounds multiply the patient's body weight in kilogram by 2.2. So the formula will be LB equal to kilogram multiplied by 2.2. And here, remember, 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 LB. Let's look at this with an example. Patient's weight is 73 kilogram and convert this to LBs. So the formula is pounds equal to kilogram multiplied by 2.2. And here, 73 multiplied by 2.2 gives the answer 160.6. And hence, the patient's weight will be 161 pounds or LBs. Next comes body mass index. Body mass index is a reliable indicator of body fatness for most people. It is used to screen for weight categories that may lead to health problems. If the body mass index is below 18.5, then it indicates they are underweight. If it is between 18.5 to 24.9, it indicates they are normal weight. If it is between 25 to 29.9, it indicates they are overweight. And if it is 30 or above 30, it indicates they are obese. Now, how do we calculate body mass index? The formula is BMI is equal to weight in kilogram divided by height in meter squared. For example, weight of the patient is 75 kilogram, height is 1.80 meter. What is the BMI? BMI is equal to 75 divided by 1.80 into 1.80 and this gives the answer 23.15. So the body mass index will be 23.15. Next comes ideal body weight. Ideal body weight is used for those calculations for certain medications like analgesics for example ketamine, sedatives for example etomidate, antipsychotics for example haloperidol and other drugs. The ideal body weight and adjustable body weight are used to calculate medication dosages when the patient is obese. Next, how do we calculate ideal body weight? Let's look formula for calculating ideal body weight in men. Ideal body weight for men is equal to 50 plus 0.91 into height in centimeter minus 152.4. And the formula for calculating ideal body weight for women is 45.5 plus 0.91 into height in centimeter minus 152.4. Let's look at this with an example. Calculate the ideal body weight of a woman who is 160 centimeter in height. Ideal body weight is equal to 45.5 plus 0.91 into height in centimeter minus 152.4. And applying all into the formula, we get the answer 52.4. So, the ideal body weight of the woman will be 52.4. Next example, calculate the ideal body weight of a man who is 160 centimeter in height. Ideal body weight is equal to 50 plus 0.91 into height in centimeter minus 152.4. Applying all into this formula, we get the answer 57. So the ideal body weight of the man will be 57. Now next comes adjusted body weight. As mentioned before, the ideal body weight and the adjusted body weight are used to calculate the medication dosages when the patient is obese. The formula to calculate adjusted body weight is equal to ideal body weight plus 0.4 multiplied by actual weight minus ideal body weight. Now let's look at this with an example. Calculate the ideal body weight and adjusted body weight of a man who is 160 centimeter in height. The actual weight is 62. Now, first, ideal body weight is equal to 50 plus 0.91 multiplied by 160 minus 152.4. And this gives the answer 57. So the ideal body weight is 57. Now, the adjusted body weight formula is equal to ideal body weight plus 0 0.4 multiplied by actual weight minus ideal body weight. So applying all into the formula, we get the answer 59. So the adjusted body weight here will be 59. Next comes body surface area. How to calculate body surface area? 
we have two formulas here. If the weight and height are in kgs and centimeter, the formula is body surface area equal to square root of weight in kilogram multiplied by height in centimeter divided by 3600. And the second formula is if the weight is given in lbs and height in inches. Then the formula is BSA equal to square root of weight in LB multiplied by height in inches divided by 3131. Let's look at the formula 1 with an example. Calculate the body surface area of a patient who weighs 30 kg and 90 cm in height. So the formula is BSA equal to square root of weight in kilogram multiplied by height in centimeter divided by 3600. So applying all into the formula, we get the answer 0 0.866. So the body surface area will be 0 0.87. Next example, calculate the body surface area of a patient who weighs 150 LB and 60 inches. The formula is BSA is equal to square root of weight in LB multiplied by height in inches divided by 3131. So applying into the formula, we get square root of 9000 divided by 3131, which gives the answer square root of 2.87 and which gives 1.695. So the body surface area will be 1.70. Next comes serum ascites albumin gradient. The serum ascites albumin gradient or gap is a calculation used in medicine to help determine the cause of ascites. The formula to calculate will be serum albumin minus ascites albumin which gives the serum ascites albumin gradient. For example, serum albumin is 4.1 gram per dl, ascites albumin is 3.3 gram per dl and the serum ascites albumin gradient will be 4.1 minus 3.3 which gives the answer 0 0.8 gram per dl. If the serum ascites albumin gradient is over 1.1, it is in the context of portal hypertension and if it is under 1.1, it suggests peritoneal causes. So here you go with part 2 of our math for nurses formulas and measurements which we use clinically as well as for competitive exams. If you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe it and share it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. And we will be continuing with our part 3 of Math for Nurses in our next video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.